Keep going for Brian Monfrey. Woo! Also, keep it going for the Copy the Arena, man. You gotta check this out. Um, Thecopyarena.com. We have a lot of things going on. We also have a red tape show coming out where you're actually gonna have to sign a clearance to come inside because it's gonna get bad. Where's more black where's people at? You know, we're gonna say they didn't work. <laughs> anyway, that's what anyway, Next time they come to the stage, put your hands together for one of our favorites. John Paul McGowan. I, I don't know why he puts it up. He's just going to take it right back out again. <laughs> so thank you very much. My name is John Paul. I am your great value Santa Claus. <laughs> you want to know who delivers the gifts from Wish.com? That's me. <laughs> uh, so write legibly or I'll be visiting you tonight. <laughs> uh, like everyone else, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself because it's my favorite topic. I am uh, a dad. been married for 21 years. Thank you. It's been the best 15 years of my life. <laughs> my kiddo, she's just about to turn 11 and if I've got to say anything about it, it's that, you know, I only really believe in one curse. Some of you may know this. It's the mother's curse. May your children be just like you, only worse. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> Not that I was a bad kid. I wasn't. I was quiet, but I was smart. Very smart. And so was my kiddo. The problem is, she's got the confidence to let the other kids know that she smarted them. I didn't have it. No, I, I got to make the kids laugh early. Because, you know, it's either make them laugh or get my ass kicked. And look at me. I haven't changed a whole lot. I'm not outrunning them. <laughs> so I got real good at making them laugh. And that kind of grew into, you know, enjoying making people laugh and enjoying entertaining people. And, I started to put together little skits and, and scenes on the playground with my friends. We'd reenact little Star Wars scenes or whatever popular TV show episode just came out, He-Man or G.I. Joe. And it kind of developed from there. I kind of got the, the theater bug. So later that year, I launched my first production. It went very well, Green Eggs and Ham. Everybody <laughs> loved it. <laughs> Uh, but it was my rendition of Deep Throat that really made my name. <laughs> oh yeah, the, everybody at St. Michael's Episcopal School loved it. Yeah. it Monsignor Brown came twice. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad <laughs> uh, But yeah, I've been doing theater all my life, and you know, with that comes some nerd stuff, obviously. You know, like, you know anybody? Even, uh, gamers here, board game, card game, well, yeah, I'm not you. <laughs> yeah, I love playing all sorts of games. Of course, you know, I would make the, the kids laugh, but then they found out I gamed, and then they had another reason to keep my ass. <laughs> so, but that's okay. It's, you know, I, I enjoy it, and I'm pretty good at it. I have fun. Uh, anybody here play fantasy football? Yeah. I've got some bad news for you. <laughs> Fantasy football is D and D without twenty years. <laughs> I loved it when that came out. That hmm. vindicated every my childhood. Uh, recently, I did something that was well, pretty detrimental to my stand-up comment, comedy. Uh, I got a job, <laughs> and, and I like my job. Don't get me wrong. It's just. Trying to make my life seem interesting or more than it was was a challenge. You know, I'm sure some of you can relate. Uh, I had to add things on my resume that kind of stretched a little bit, but it's where I also found out I'm good with words. Because I, first thing on my resume is I meet weekly with a group of six cohorts where we analyze strategically problems that require out-of-the-box thinking, using strict set of guidelines, random chance, and 
a little bit of left hand thinking. It's an easy way of saying I play D and D. I mean, I you know I can't. I was in the same boat making things sound tough. You know, I worked in a cube farm for 11 years. Yeah, how do you make that sound tough? Yeah, it was um, held up with four other guys. Worked in a 11 year company. You know, got 11 year sentence. Let go for budget cuts. Yeah, that's not really a fun way of saying I looked at numbers all day. <laughs> not any, any car guys in here? Car people? Yeah, a couple. I, I, I appreciate cars. Yeah, it's it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like women. I love to look at them. They're beautiful to be around, but I have no fucking clue how they work. <laughs> And, and honestly, if you ever see me under one, call 911. <laughs> car. If you see me under a car. <laughs> if you see me under a woman, then my only fans find me We'll talk later. Um, yeah. But I mean, for everybody, the last couple of years has been interesting, right? You know? Finding out who you really are, finding out what's really important to you, finding out what you want to do with your life, finding out that being in lockdown for two years really doesn't change your uh, your routine a whole lot. <laughs> but I did get a lot of research done. Uh, went through Pornhub twice. <laughs> I, I recently got an email from them asking if I was okay. I hadn't been on in a while. <laughs> you know, it's kind of sad when you're getting love texts from Pornhub. <laughs> No, and again, everybody's saying, and everybody will say this, thank Comedy Arena for letting us do this, for having us, I really appreciate it. I'll let you in on a little secret. Um, this is my first time in front of a main stage audience. Oh, woo! So, thank you. Y'all, y'all took my opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, of course, comedy is a lot like sex. You wonder if you're doing it right. Wondering if you know the other person or people are enjoying it. <laughs> Lots of cameras everywhere. <laughs> and at the end of the night, you need a drink to drown your shame and sorrow. <laughs> so I, I mean, I've been this. I've been prepping for this my entire life. <laughs> now going back to when I was a kid, you know, I told you I was a smart kid. Let you know a little bit about that. When I was in kindergarten, my first day of kindergarten, I came home. I threw my backpack down and I said, I quit, I'm not going back. <laughs> and my mother said, mm, what's wrong with little pancake? Why are you quitting? <laughs> I said, well, they wanted me to pick a cow purple. Cows aren't purple. <laughs> Stupid bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, little pancake, it, it's okay. We go back later and try it again. So I gave it another couple days and three days later, came back, quit again. <laughs> this time, they had the gall to ask me to paint an alligator brown. Yep. They're not brown. She <laughs> said, my little pancake is going to look. Finally, I asked, well, Mom, why do you keep calling me a little pancake? She goes, well, you know how when you're making pancakes, the first one you usually throw away if it's not as good? Uh. <laughs> I'm the old sister. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. Here we go for John Paul.